First of all, uh, understand that William Wegman is very well known as a conceptual artist and a videographer, video maker, um, as well as a painter and someone who draws and someone who photographs a lot. So in this exhibition, we're only concerned with photography and only some of the photography because before uh, he started to work with the dogs, he was using photography um, to express his ideas in a very effective way and getting a lot of attention. So very early on in the late 60s, early, early 70s, he began to exhibit first in California, then in New York and California, and then quite quickly in Europe, starting in Paris. So he has this reputation, not just a photographer and not just a Polaroid photographer. So in this exhibition, we decided to look at only the period starting in 1979, when he is invited to use the Polaroid camera. So this is a very big camera. It, it needs a room this size or bigger, actually bigger than this room we're in here. Uh, it needs a technician and it needs uh, an assistant. So it's very complicated. He, may, he has to travel to this camera. There's only a few of them in the world actually. Um, he has to bring his own props, whatever he, if he, if he brings furniture or uh, equipment, whatever, he has, to, he has to bring it with him. And he works for a full day, if, if he can, he works for a full day with his dogs. And over this period of, of, of since 1979 until 2007, he used Polaroid exclusively. So we have a fabulous body of maybe several thousand prints from this period. And it was this that gave me the idea for this exhibition. But in 2007, he's forced to abandon Polaroid because Polaroid is disappearing as a medium. And uh, he's obliged, if he continues, to go digital, which he does. And he finds it's very different. The color is very different, which you can see here. It's, it's very much more like um, silkscreen uh, or in fact, it's, it's, a, it's a print, it's not a chemical substance. But he began to work with this new method and mastered it very quickly, and then began to like it for its, for its own properties. But you will see in our, our exhibition, we don't mix the Polaroid and the, and the um, pigment prints. We don't mix analog and, and digital, because they don't, they don't work well together. It's almost as if they're different languages. So, our, our attempt then is to look from 79 until 2017. There's some very recent pictures. He was commissioned by Vogue magazine in the last, in the last room. I guess they're the most recent pictures in the exhibition. Uh, and we tried to represent every kind of photograph he makes. Then going from a few thousand pictures, I selected them down to five or 600. Then it became difficult because they're all so interesting to get a reasonable exhibition of 100 and the book which is on display here which is about 300. So we think we, we kind of represent the different tendencies he has and the, chap, the, the, the exhibition is divided into nine sections like chapters, each of which looks at a different aspect of his work. Very good questions. Well, first of all, when I proposed the idea to him, I said, I want to call it being human, être humain. And he said, I don't like it. And then I showed him one picture, which is, shows the body of the, shows the torso of the dog, like, like this. And I said, that's the picture that gave me the idea, being human, because it looks like a, a, looks like a Rocky, uh, you know, Sylvester Stallone from the, from the side. And he said, I like it. So then we had the permission to call it être humain, being human. And so it's my idea is that these dogs uh, really are like people. Now, human beings have a special relationship with dogs, probably comes from hunting in the Paleolithic era, hunting together, learning to work together. We domesticated dogs tens of thousands of years ago. We retain this interest in dogs. And 
so I, for me, it's not as if they're just two species which work together, but they, they kind of have become something, something like this in human history. And Wegman himself kind of admits to this. Once I proposed this thesis to him, that it's really about human beings, um, whether it's fear, jealousy, anger, uh, love, uh, pride, all of, all of these emotions, they come through in the photographs. Uh, he, he thought, yes, this is a good, a, a good angle on my work, but it's, but it's my angle. And I'm sure you could have chosen a very different exhibition from these thousands of pictures. And Sam Sturze, the director of the Rencontre, could have selected another. I, I'm not trying to work so much as a curator here. I'm trying to work as a kind of collaborator, looking at his work and saying, Bill, what if we looked at it from this angle, this human angle? And see what comes of it. But to stay with, stay with the human body, the exhibition begins with this theme. So the first, the first work you see when you come into the main exhibition is you see the rocky chest. And then it goes into what I call nudes. And sometimes the nudes are really like classical nudes, and sometimes they're just a fragment of, a fragment of the body. And uh, so He's, he's following, in a way, the history of the nude. In photography, you had, in the 19th century, you had the full, the full body, always female, but always the full body. And then it wasn't until 1920s with the, the little Leica, the small camera, that you started to have fragments, fragments of the body. So he has both. He has the, the full nudes and these, and these fragments. So I just called it, 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 called it uh, physique in the book. And in the exhibition, it's nu. The, 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 dog, the dog is a dog, like we have here, so let's say the naked dog, is only, uh, let's say, one half of the exhibition. The other half of the exhibition are dressed dogs. So they're the ones who become people. And if you see the cover of the English book, it has a dressed dog with holding a, holding a, a naked dog. So I wanted to play on this dressed and undressed because it's also a theme for human beings. We're also naked under, under these things. Huh? Um, and then I thought, okay, what, how more can you break it down? How more can you break it down? So we have nudes, or nudes. Then we have a section called people like us. And in, this is a little difficult in French because it, I have two chapters, people like us, comme nous, les gens comme nous, and people we like, les gens que nous aimons. So in English it's a funny, people we like, people like us. In French I can't get the same uh, poésie. It's a little bit different. So we adjusted the chapters for the, for the French language. Vogue doesn't need a translation, that's the fashion section. We thought that needed, especially in France, that needed a special room. Uh, hallucination is, is where you don't know quite what you're looking at, a dog with many eyes, for example. Uh, that's a double exposure. So there are tricks, photographic tricks, but never Photoshop. I have to say this very loudly, never Photoshop. Some people assume, ah, oh, did, did you, you know, did you make the, is the, is the dog not really jumping? Is this uh, Photoshopped in later? No, in this case, this roll of masking tape, is thrown. So it's just caught with the, the strobe. It's just caught and it just happens to where the, you know, where it goes like, it just happens to stick together. And the dog is reacting to the, to the throw. He's going like this. So everything is real in this sense. Very important because if it was Photoshop, it would be easy to do. And part of, part of the joy of William Wegman is these are very difficult to do. And maybe, I don't know how many times he, he took this picture, I don't know, maybe 20, 30 times before he got this perfect ballet-like motion. So with Wegman, the detail is extremely important, but it's real, it's really there. So if, if, if the paw in the photograph is like this, and he takes it, he likes it like that instead, he takes another picture, maybe he likes that one. 
very, very, so he might take, in, with the Polaroids, he might have taken up to 30 or 40 pictures to get one. Very expensive, because you're these big things huh, coming out. If I don't like it, it's, you know. With the digital, of course, you see on the screen. So you can just keep going until you get exactly what you want. Um, and then he decided he would keep more or less the Polaroid scale. He's gone, you see it's a little bit bigger, the Polaroids are about like this. But more or less, he did not want the, the dogs to become enormous. He, he avoids very big prints. He wants to keep them human, human scale. I can't honestly, I can't honestly give you one, but uh, it, I would, I would cheat a bit here and say it was actually painting, photographic, almost photographic realism of a Canaletto, the painter Canaletto. And looking at these pictures absolutely fascinated me. It was the detail. And I think I've always been drawn to the realism of photography. I've never been so interested in uh, fiction, in photography, and invention, total invention, fabrication, construction, all of that. I've always been interested in this connection with the real world, as Canaletto had it, but also with the distance, the artist's distance. So that's, that's what I'll give you, Canaletto. The best one is right now to see the William Wegman show the l'affiche and uh, the image everywhere and uh, upside down and just to tell you the story here when when Sam asked can we have this I said William Wegman uh, I don't think he's going to like this you know uh, this, well I'll try so I write to him I say dear Bill um, listen they want to do this upside down it's they do it every year it's a good idea it gets people's attention what do you think and I was waiting for an explosion you know he goes, I love it. The emails, je, je l'adore, I love it. So, okay. So for me, it's a great pleasure. It's even a great pleasure to walk around with that. And this, the only, the only place here that it's like this is in the exhibition. So you have to come here for the real, authentic one. 